come up with the concept for this? Well, this was just, you know, by chance. You know, um, in the past, we had a, a, a party, somewhat of a breakfast party, um, on the other side, from more mature crowd. What they did was, after the Panama Finals, the party used to kick off at that time. It was a Dutch party. So it was like an after Bring a party? Bottle. Yes. It was directly associated with the Panama. And Panorama in those days used to finish maybe four. Yes. And that party would start at that time. And a group of us friends really used to hang out, would go to that party after Panorama. And you know, it was a great time. We moved back to Trinidad. That particular party did not exist. So I decided to invite some friends over. And they brought some friends from Jamaica and Cayman and Barbados. And we, I mean, it was just, from that point, it was just a lot of fun. The first year we did the same thing that they did. Um, got about the same kind of crowd and um, it was a Dutch party and then we found you know even in, in that we learned from that as well because many people bring in the same drink and then people want a variety of drinks so then we came up with the idea no let's take money in front so we could buy drinks and as, as I said it evolved, it evolved really we became an all-inclusive never once have we advertised um, and there's always more demand than tickets always We've raised, we've tried to, to grow the party, as you would know, as a person coming here for some years now, um, and it just isn't big enough still. I would say we turn away maybe four times the, the number of people that are actually wow. here, at least, wow. without advertising. The difficulty at this point really is uh, the ticket distribution. We, we do have difficulties distributing the tickets uh, to everyone. Uh, we have original people who attended the party, we have regulars who attend the parties, and that number is way beyond the number of tickets that we have, and that is the most difficult part. What kind of size is it now? How many people? Uh, we're looking at about um, 1,300 people. That many? That many. It really doesn't feel like that when you're in it. It feels like a community thing. It still feels like a house party that spilled out into the street. It, it's a friends and family event, and um, that's what we try to do. We try to keep it like that. It's a place where we grew up and, um, you know, great memories, and this is one of the reasons for the party. Uh, if you go around and talk to people in the party, that's probably what they're going to say. They're seeing people who they haven't seen for a number of years. And that's one of the beauties of the party. And what about the community aspect, the giving back? Well, the party has never really intentionally been about making a profit. Um, that was always my feeling. So that when we, there's an inconvenience obviously to the people in the, in the, in the area. So we try to help those in need who are ill, um, who have gone through some financial difficulty, primarily in our area, and um, we try to mend if a wall becomes broken or dirty or somebody's garden is dug up because people parked on the, the lawn or whatever. So we try to, to fix whatever has been damaged and to help who is in need in the area. The Wendy Fitzwilliams Park, and she's, she's always, she's been from day one, from the first ever breakfast party, she's been here. And um, we do contribute you know, funds to the park to give some support to beautify the park. Uh, Kitty's Carnival in the Vale. And uh, among other things, you know, we always take care of neighbors and, you know, individuals on the street. Marcia, critical element in the breakfast party. You are the woman behind the whole brains of this operation. Yes, well, the only woman on the committee. It is now about nine o'clock in the morning. As you know, people have been here since about three, four. How long are they really gonna keep raving? This party should finish at 11.30. However, as much as we try, it's not always possible. They just won't leave. <laughs> is that where the hose comes in to put them out? <laughs> the hose comes in before. When it's time to leave, you may find them lying in the street, banging on pans and whatever they can find. And only just shut down music or as Beanie Man say, cut the rhythm. That's right. No music, they make their own. <laughs> Well, thank you for providing us with music and an opportunity to do what we can do nowhere else. Be your fun in this party. You are welcome. If we decide to move the party from here, it's going to lose that vibe, as I mentioned before. You know, when I'm on mornings when that sun is rising and you look and you see the mountains and stuff and people that you know, I think that's, that's the beauty. We just want to ensure people have a good time. And um, as you would know, there was some reluctance initially to do this series of, of, of DVDs that you have. Um, and 
primarily the reason that we do it is because it's a legacy. One day it will end, one day we will be too old to do it. And you know, it's something to look back on and say how, how it, you know, what, what we left behind, how good it was. It's at 3.30 in the morning, you know, and we recognize that, you know, it, it, is, it is disturbing to some of the neighbors. And if it is, we apologize. However, uh, I, I think it's something that the community could really appreciate and gain from. You know, we're really bringing people together. What I want to get out of it is to hear somebody say that that's the best party they ever went to. That's my joy. Well, let me say this to you. This is the best party that I have ever been to.